Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Jo. Thank you so much for joining me again. Today we're talking about new developments in the cases against Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow. A big development in these two cases. I am going to order the joiner of the cases. Both Chad Daybell and Lori Vallow are charged in connection to the discovery of the remains of Lori's two children buried in Chad's backyard after they had been missing for the better part of a year. A judge has ruled that the trials of Lori and Chad will be combined. Judge Stephen Boyce made his ruling on Thursday, October 29th. Chad's attorney, John Pryor, had argued that combining the trials of Lori and Chad would increase the amount of media coverage surrounding the event, and that would make it harder to find an impartial jury, therefore making the trial unfair for Chad. Uh, but Mr. Wood's argument, Judge, to suggest uh, convenience to the court and expense to the county and the difficulty uh, of, of witnesses is, is secondary. And primarily, Judge, the importance is, is Mr. Daybell going to get a fair opportunity to present his side of the story? And is it going to be able to be presented without any kind of prejudice or bias? Or are they going to infer anything from any other witness or any other defendant or anybody else that, uh, that does not afford him an opportunity to fairly present his case. And although 8A doesn't specifically address bias, the Nava case talks briefly that there is still a, a prejudice or a bias and the court can evaluate that. Now I understand there's been an inordinate amount of publicity. Um, Mr. Wood has pointed out examples of, of, some of, of some of the publicity and I've pointed out examples and that's going to be reserved for a different date in, in November when we talk about venue. But the fact remains, Judge, that by linking the two of these folks together is still going to provide a modicum of prejudice. And although I have to concede that Joinder, when you look straight at the rule 8A, that there is an allegation of, 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 a, uh, of, of, of similar facts in this case. Prosecutor Rob Wood said given the circumstances and charges against Chad and Lori, which involve conspiracy, that the law allows for the cases to be joined. And as such, the state respectfully asks this court to join uh, Chad and Lori Daybell's cases into one case. Would argue that keeping the cases separate would mean double the work for everyone involved. He said the trials should be combined for efficiency because the same evidence and witnesses are both being used to prosecute Chad and Lori. He said two trials would be more costly and unnecessary because the same witnesses and evidence will be presented and could be done so at one time. Uh, Your Honor, Idaho criminal rules 8B and 13 establish the standard by which a court decides that two defendants should be charged and tried together or if joinder is appropriate. Uh, rule 8B states that it's appropriate for two defendants to be charged together if they are alleged to have participated in the same act or trans transaction or in the same series of acts or transactions constituting an offense or offenses. Uh, it also establishes that each defendant does not need to have identical charges to do so. Rule, thir rule 13 gives the court the authority to order that two or more complaints, indictments, or informations be tried together if the offenses and defendants, if there is more than one, could have been joined in a single complaint, indictment, or information. In the case before the court, uh, Chad and Lori Daybell are both charged with two counts of conspiracy to conceal, alter, or destroy evidence. Uh, Chad Daybell is additionally charged with two counts of concealing, altering, or destroying evidence. Uh, the evidence in question uh, for all counts uh, is essentially the same. Uh, uh, the, that evidence is the deceased bodies of Lori Daybell's children, Tylee Ryan and J.J. Vallow. Judge Boyce agreed with Wood and ruled that given the circumstances and precedents established in prior cases, the trials of the doomsday couple should be joined as one. And so when I look at all the factors and the supporting case law, uh, I don't find that the prejudice at this point has been demonstrated that would be sufficient to prevent me from joining these cases. And so based on the analysis and consideration of the citations also provided by Mr. Wood, and also in due consideration of the new case that was cited by Mr. Pryor, the Nava case, I read through that as well. I do find the facts of that somewhat um, inapplicable to the issue I've got at hand. That's where a single defendant uh, had a trial involving separate multiple victims which were put together in a single trial 
here we've got two defendants with a single common scheme or plan that is alleged. And so upon consideration of all that, counsel, I am going to grant the motion to join at this time. Um, as the parties indicated, that doesn't forego the possibility of a future motion for severance if uh, prejudice is demonstrated by the defense in support of that motion. So clearly, Mr. Pryor, you have that opportunity going forward if uh, you believe the prejudice would exist after uh, we get further down the road with these cases being joined. But I am going to order the joinder of the cases. Lori's attorney, Mark Means, did not make a court appearance but does not object to the two trials being combined. In a strange move, however, Mark Means has taken to Twitter to discuss his client's case. On October 21st, Means sent out a cryptic tweet with a video of rats scurrying away and saying, quote, As I prepare the defense for Lori Vallow Daybell, I am learning that persons like Melanie Gibbs and her boyfriend David Warwick appear to have been eagerly involved in more than they let on. If you know something, say something, end quote. Means followed up on that tweet with another one that says, quote, the defense lacks the resources of the prosecution, the state of Idaho, Attorney General of Idaho, FBI, Chandler Police, Madison County Sheriff's Department, Fremont County Sheriff's Department, Rexburg Police, etc. We need persons of knowledge to come forward, end quote. In another note, October 19th marks the one-year anniversary of Tammy Daybell's death. This year on that day, Tammy's friends and loved ones announced the creation of a foundation to honor her life and memory. The mission of the Tammy Douglas Daybell Foundation is to give children the opportunity to love the written word. Tammy served the community as a beloved librarian for many years before her death. When Tammy died, her husband Chad Daybell told the coroner and law enforcement officials that Tammy had died in her sleep and had been declining in health for a while. At the time, her death was ruled natural causes, but since has since been changed to suspicious. In December of last year, Tammy's body was exhumed for an autopsy. Those results have yet to be released. Chad was arrested back in June after the remains of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan, Lori's children, were found buried in his backyard in Fremont County, Idaho. Chad is charged with two felony counts of conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence, and two felony counts of destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence. He has pleaded not guilty to those charges. Lori was arrested back in February. She is charged with two felony counts of conspiracy to commit destruction, alteration, or concealment of evidence. She, too, has pleaded not guilty. There are still no murder charges for either Chad or Lori in this case. Tylee and JJ were missing for almost a year before they were found buried in Chad's backyard. Both of the kids went missing in September of 2019, and it's believed they were killed during that time. Investigators believe Tylee was killed around September 9th and her brother JJ was killed later in the month around September 23rd. Chad is scheduled to be in court again in November. On November 24th, his attorney John Pryor is going to ask the charges against Chad be dismissed. Pryor also wants the trial moved from Fremont County to another venue. A new date for the combined trial of the Doomsday Colts couple has not been set. Previously, Chad had been set to go on trial in January, while Lori was set to go on trial in March. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.